Genesis. Uh, if you know anything about it, most people do. First book in the Bible, but these stories have great, great application to our lives. And uh, this one is profound. So on this Father's Day, listen for God's word to you. 18th chapter, the writer of Genesis records this is happening. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. And when he saw them, these three men, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them, to greet them. And this is, you know, it's kind of interesting as well as to what he does. And he bowed down to the ground. That is not a normal greeting in the Middle East. And he said these words to them, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass from or by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. Now, they have not met before. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham then ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and, and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. How did they know it was Sarah? Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. In other words, she couldn't bear children any longer. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I didn't laugh, for she was afraid. He, the angel, said, Oh yes, you did laugh. This is the word of the Lord to which we say, Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, let's pray. Loving God, we, each of us have carved out a portion of this day to hear your word, to set our prayers before you, and to ask for guidance and direction in this life. And as the we did at the pavilion service uh, this morning, we did hear your word read and proclaimed, and we did respond in the giving of our tithes. We did offer our prayers, so too, help that to be about us this morning at this nine o'clock service as we reflect upon Scripture and then apply it to our everyday life. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, as I am sure, it won't be long before this church will have another pictorial directory and we will have each of your smiling faces in it right 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 as i stand here this morning i'm sure that will probably of the five churches where i have pastored this one will be the best looking crowd the best pictorial directory that i've been associated with it pictures they are really great aren't they they seem to take us back in time. A couple of weeks ago, just as a sidelight, Sandy Roth and Toby painted my office. You'll have to go in and look at that office now. It's spectacular. It was great before, but it's brightened up a bit. It's much more uh, 
happy in terms of its color. They were painting as I was at the Cubs game. Does it ever get any better than that? When I came home, I saw this beautiful office, and Toby was starting to make plans for the way the decor of the office would lay itself out. And she said, you know what? You have all of these pictures from all of your travels around the world. Why don't we put up a world map and then have little uh, pieces of yarn attached to these pictures that will show you where you've been and the people that you've met. And I thought, that's a great idea. So she started pulling all these pictures from our travels that are my travels that are on her computer and she placed them in front of me hard copies and I was just lost in the moment um, of these pictures I was overwhelmed at where I have been you know I'm not a, first of all I'm not I, I, I never very, viewed myself as a traveler I don't like to fly um, when I started off in ministry, don't go too fast. I've got to explain a couple of these. Um, but this is, these are some of the places that I've been. This is uh, Rwanda uh, in the remote parts of that country. I'm a part of a delegation to um, dedicate two new churches. And this is in the heat of the day, and all pastors in Rwanda wear stoles of that green color and this will be a four and a half hour dedication service okay then we move on well here we are in lebanon just outside of syria and this is recreation time at one of the refugee schools sponsored by the presbyterian church usa and the outreach foundation and i'm racing uh one of the kids and they all thought that was pretty funny. Um, I did beat him, so I was, I was pleased with myself with that. And then we're off to the next one. This is, this is what started it all, an African mission trip to Tanzania. And the people that you meet. This is the school where we would hold the medical clinic and where we would also evangelize and where I would speak that night before 4,000 gathered Africans who had never heard the gospel before. And then I think you've got another one, don't you? That is in Basra, Iraq. Uh, One of the preschool kids named Alan. One miraculous thing about Iraq is that the Christian daycare schools are the most sought-after schools to attend. They are bar none, the best schools in the country. And Alan is a Muslim child. 99% of the kids are Muslim, and they hear the Christian message. And I was there with that. Hold on to that one. Just keep that one up for a little while. Pictures. You know, they are moments in time, memories of life, if you will, and they're some of who I am and probably you are. We live in a very visual world. I don't think that's probably anything new. It's even getting more so these days with the preponderance of selfies, even the selfie stick to get even a better picture. And then when it seems like a new cell phone is released, it always has an upgrade in the camera. And most of us like to take pictures, I think. Most of us enjoy looking at things in our past. But some photos, they can stop you. They stop you dead in your tracks. This one does it every time. This is my daughter, Ashley, younger daughter, who left for Belize today. We're outside the Norumgora Crater on, our, on a safari with the rest of the crew, and it was just a quick little picture somebody took on something to remember on Father's Day. It's hard. She's going to be married soon in October. If you were, you know, those are some of my photos If you were to show me some of yours, who would you put up on the screens? I bet they'd be of loved ones and friends, special places that you've visited, special things that happened to you. Well, today, though, if Abraham were here, he'd be showing us a picture, too. 
of these three men that he met outside his tent one day. It was a rather strange encounter, really. The story finds Abraham and Sarah near the Oaks of Mamre. That's about 20 miles east of Jerusalem near Hebron. And they live, Abraham and Sarah do, a semi-nomadic life. Yeah, they live in tents. They pick up those tents and they travel around a little bit. And it often means that they will meet strangers for the very first time. And as this particular story goes in Genesis, the author decides to write an account to you. They're all powerful, but this one today is masterfully crafted. It's almost conveniently divided into three unique scenes that are quite easy to take away for you to consider. In scene one, briefly, the very beginning, we know that three men approach Abraham and Sarah at their tent. We don't really know much about these guys at all, and we know that Abraham goes to greet them. But what's strange about this is Abraham doesn't greet them as visitors. You know, these guys that he encounters right away are significant for Abraham. We know to begin with that this is going to be a holy encounter, a holy visit. As Abraham bows to the ground, as he does in no other cases, and he refers to the three men as Lord. And these, these guys aren't visitors. They're actually received by Abraham to be messengers from God. Angels, if you will. They have a mission, in other words, and an announcement to make. They carry, are going to carry out a particular action. More than likely, in this case, two notable ones. And Abraham, upon greeting them and bowing and referring to them as Lord, asks them to stay for a little while, to refresh themselves. The Middle East is a hot, arid, dry place, and Abraham knows this, and he extends the same offer to these men. Come and stay a little while, get some water, get some food, gather underneath the large oak trees of Mamre and stay for a little while. And strangely, these angels take him up on the offer. The men retreat to a shady spot and relax for a little while. And then Abraham gets busy. He runs to the tent to tell Sarah to start fixing some bread, get involved in making other things for the meal and Abraham is off to get some meat from the flock probably a choice yearling in terms of a calf and suddenly then the scene ends and we're left to ponder some things I think there's great takeaways after each of the scene you know first of all the incredible gift of hospitality Abraham and Sarah are as welcoming as they come. And then the formation of a community. These strangers, perfect strangers, are invited to come in and have a meal, and all of a sudden a conversation is going to take place. Scene two now, the curtain rises, and we find Abraham and the men underneath the shade tree eating and having a conversation. Now, one can only guess what the conversation was about. I mean, if you knew an angel was in your midst, what would you talk about? I pondered that this week. If I could talk to a messenger from God, what would I say? What would I ask about? Well, one thing we do know that became the topic of conversation between these folks was that Sarah would be soon become pregnant. And once again in this scene, I found myself pondering that news. How did Abraham receive it? He was going to be a dad for the very first time. I I went back to when Toby told me she was pregnant with Lauren over 30 years ago. I looked at the floor, 
And I said, I'm going to be a dad. Did Abraham raise his hands and praise God? Did he look at the floor? What did he do? The only reaction we hear is is some utterance from Sarah that there was some chuckling going on because she's heard the news and she's beginning to laugh a little bit. I would imagine most women would who have learned that they would become pregnant in their 80s. And the scene ends. And we're left to ponder the remarkable things about this scene. The good gifts that come from God. The surprising nature of God. That new life comes from God. Oh, it's a great scene as well. And then scene three is upon us, and that wasn't a part of what I read to you today. The final scene where Abraham, being the consummate host, decides to walk his three messengers down the road a little bit as they say goodbye and close their relationship. The three strangers are angels now, the text says, who have been sent by God with another mission too. They are on their way to Sodom to destroy it because God has had enough of the immoral behavior of those people. And I have loved the story, you know, I've already told you, because of the great takeaways of how this story helps me live the Christian life. But there are three large, obvious points that I can live by today as I leave this place. You know, I always, when reading this story, remember must keep in mind that in the mundane aspects of living this life day after day, that God brings surprises. This God we we serve is a God of surprises, and never is that more strongly communicated than this gal by the name of Sarah. You know, Sarah's well beyond retirement, for heaven's sakes, 80 plus, probably seen it all and done it all, and very little would impress her these days. She's in the last season of her life. Her life is coming to a close. But God has other plans. Don't you see that or Can you imagine that for your own life? I see it in my life in the mundane aspects. A lot of you know that I'm a runner. I jog around town every other day, generally speaking. The other day I'm running these, you know, these miles down the road and all of a sudden somebody honks at me. It's a gray van. I don't know who it was. And so I travel down the road a little bit further, jump into the neighborhood, and all of a sudden there's that gray van again honking at me. It turns out to be Paul Knopf. And that run was just a surprising kind of run for me. And I was looking at this text and amazed once again at how these mundane aspects, this regular routine of life gets interrupted with surprises. And God is about that in writing sermon after sermon after going to meeting after meeting, being nine years away from retirement, I could conclude that God's basically done with me, that I might just be ending it all here. But that's not this text. The story of Abraham and the visitors that show up cause us to conclude that God is a God of surprises and that God isn't close to being done with anybody here. The great coach Jimmy Valvano on ESPN when they do the Jimmy V days is most remembered for this same message. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. You never know what God is going to do. Those are words of encouragement this morning. I mean, I know you've been on this journey of faith for quite a little while, but God's not expecting you just to barely cross, you know, cross this finish line saying, Whew, barely made that. 
It's not going to end that way. Clearly, in advanced age, God still has great plans for Abraham and Sarah, and I believe God has those same great plans for you and me. God is not done with us yet. Because God brings newness, wholeness, vibrancy, passion, and purpose at, in all seasons of life. So remember, just one takeaway from this is that basic scriptural truth. Keep going. Don't quit. Finish strong. God is not done with you. But you also can't dismiss the second great takeaway from this text. You can't dismiss the hospitality and generosity displayed by Abraham and Sarah and how important it is for us to be the same way. You know, the Bible pictures the kingdom of heaven as a generous, even extravagant banquet. And this text, reinforces that notion. Hospitality is a great thing because it does so many other things. It, it fosters good relationships. It, it develops a deeper understanding of you and me, of our life together. Truly, some of the great church divides that we've had throughout all of these centuries could have been overcome if people would have simply sat down and had a meal together, in my estimation. It remains true today. Breaking bread together, enjoying recreation and entertainment together, causes one another, each of us, to appreciate each other more and to care for each other. Makes me think that should begin those supper clubs again. Hospitality, though, I would argue, is under assault today in North America. We are increasingly living isolated lives. Some reaching out beyond our very close circles. We wonder on the way to Chicago if we should pull alongside a motorist who is stranded. A lot of us don't know the names of our neighbors anymore and do very little in the way of initiation to find out who they are. We had a seminary intern, Rola Alashkar, and stayed with us when we were in Huntsville for three months. She was from Lebanon. One of her takeaways from her time with us was that, you know, she said, you Americans do some rather odd stuff. One thing in particular is when you come home from work, you generally isolate yourselves in your home. Rarely are there people on the front steps or on the front portions of their homes. She said she looked out into our subdivision, 300 homes. We would come home at 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening. There wasn't a single person to be seen. Abraham and Sarah are not like that. They're welcoming, warm, engaging, inviting people over to their house. They're out in the front yard. They're taking walks in their neighborhood, and if they see somebody in the yard, they say hello. They even pull up and have a conversation. Notice as well how generosity is displayed by Abraham. I bet when the three visitors came, they didn't have an appointment. He was, it was an intrusion. But yet you didn't see him not engaging. You didn't see him saying, come back another time when I've got a little more time for you. He's interrupted. And so you have from the, this story two profound truths thus far. God saying to us, I'm not done with you yet. 
and also saying, practice hospitality. Be warm. Be welcoming. But the last one is, is the one that gets me probably the most of all of it. It's that last little movement. The third takeaway of the text, namely, the humor of God. Oh, we take each other and ourselves way too seriously. This text says, smile. Will you please? Can you not conclude that God has a sense of humor? God can be hilarious at times. To think that God would open the womb of an 80-year-old and give her a baby for the very first time, does that cause you to chuckle just a bit? And to approach the Christian life in some the same way to say, I'm going to smile a little bit more, I'm going to laugh a little more often and not take things so seriously. If God do that with Sarah, can you imagine the hilarious thing that God might do with me? So to practice a little bit this morning, I thought I would tell you this concluding story. A burglar breaks into a house. He starts shining his light around, looking at all the of the house he sees some nice things that catches his eye and he begins to reach for one and he hears these words jesus is watching you he's a little bit startled but think he might be just coming to his in his head and he reaches now for another very valuable piece on the mantle over the fireplace and he hears these words Jesus is watching you. And he turns around and he knows right where the sound is coming from. And it's a parrot. It's a bird. Who are you, the burglar asks. Moses, the bird replied. Who in the heck would name a bird Moses? The man begins to chuckle a little bit. I don't know, Moses answered. I guess the same kind of people that would name their Rottweiler Jesus. (laughs) Remember always, as you read the text, as you engage Scripture, as you pray, that God wants you to finish strong. God is not done with you. God has great plans for you. In turn, be hospitable. Welcome others. Receive others. Enjoy each other. And then don't ever forget that God wants you to smile and to laugh, to love and encourage. Good things are on the horizon for you, for me, for this church, and the world in which we live as well. And now to God be all that glory that comes our way now and forevermore. Amen.